Hello and welcome to my channel. I've had another request. That's two. <laughs> I'm over overindulged with requests. Anyway, <laughs> my friend Carolyn said, could I make a video on how to start the hyperbolic crocheting off? Sure. Wool hook. I use double knit wool because that's all I tend to use. And I use a 3.5 millimetre mm hook. If you get the wool packet, it'll usually say use a four for the, for the working with it. But I tend to do everything quite loose. I know when I used to do my knitting, I had to do smaller size in knitting needles because otherwise it would be too loose. So I've just kept that tradition up and I use a smaller hook. What we're getting at, let's just show you some examples. This one was done with a magic circle. And then you work round and round and round and it gets bigger and bigger. So that's one way of doing them. Lovely. I just love these. We can do round. This one has been done by a row of, can you see it better that way? That's a row of chains and then you work on that, you go backwards and forwards and it comes out eventually all squiggly. You can see it goes for a while being just quite straight and then all of a sudden it starts puffing up, which is always nice. This one was done. So we look, we can't even see him, can we? He was done on one row, sort of oh, about 40 stitches on that one, I think. And then when I'd finished this half, I thought, hmm, I'm going to add another bit. So I picked up where I left off. And did like a another skirt for it. So you've got a double sided one. <laughs> I mean they'd look good, wouldn't they, if they were above your curtains? Right, bit sixties. Bit hippie, but um anyway. <laughs> so you can do them on a straight all the round. What else have we got? I'm trying to find you another round. There's another round. He was a much bigger round. But, but you know, I start off the same. Let's, let's not do that. But then what I've done, I've added different stitches. So you've got your single crochet. Then you've got some double crochet. And you might have a half double crochet to make him build out. I mean, that one had buttons in the middle just for something different. So let's put these out of the way because they're going to distract us. They're all down there. They're all in a bag. And let's make a start. So I look. Right. Finding the end would help. Now, for me, I do... Let's just get you going here. When I start, I obviously you want a, um, a stitch to start with. So I'll put it over my hands. Now can you see this? Yeah, over the hands. I go round my finger. Once. I pull the front over the back. No, I don't. See? <laughs> I can't do it live. One, two. Back over the front. That makes more sense. And again. And I'm on. <laughs> Strange. You all know of how to cast on, I'm sure. When I said doing the magic circle one, so I will chain three. This is just me. It's my way of doing a magic circle. I'll go into the first one where I was. I'll do a slip. Now, to me, that is my magic circle. I'm going to chain one. And I'm just going to go round in that circle. You can do as many or as little as you want. You know, as in 
how many do you do? But you're going into the circle. I'm also catching our tail end. So that we'll be tucking that away nicely. And you make your, I make my way around. Now a lot of people will say, I'm crocheting as though I'm knitting. You know, when you've got a pair of knitting needles, you're doing it like this, aren't you? And others, they'll have the stuff out here and they'll work it for, I can't do that. <laughs> I must be so khaki handed. But this works for me. We all crochet differently, I am sure of that. Let's have a look. We're getting a bit full up now. So when we think we have enough on that first bit, yeah, and we've got our little one coming. I'm still going to hold on to this and put it in, but I'm going to join with the top of there. And I'm going to do the slip stitch so that now I'm all one bit. Now, the only pattern for a hyperbolic is to do two in one stitch and one in the next. Two in the next stitch. You see what I'm doing here, hopefully. And then one in the next. And what you're doing, you're just going to repeat that. You don't have to join anymore. You'll just work round. So it's two in that one. Don't beat yourself up if you miss your counting. It's not important. What is important, you try and keep it regular, obviously. Two in that one. I usually talk to myself and I'll say... One, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty basic. Then I was like, two, and I know that number three goes in there. Three, because <laughs> you've got two and three together. And then I'll go one, <laughs> yeah. Can you see what I'm up to here? And in the next one, you're going to do. The two, three, because you're putting two in there. You can do as many singles as you want, as long as you get your twos. So you can do a two and then say three singles. Then you do a two and three singles and two. What's going to happen if you do it one and two, one, two, one, two, one, two, it will wave a lot quicker and it will wave a lot tighter. If you start doing one and three or one and four, clearly it's going to spread more and wave less. They do wave eventually. But if you're looking for a quick result, which obviously I usually am, do it small, <laughs> do it one and two, and you'll get a nice quick result. So that is that is it. And you just keep going round and round and round and round. Simple as that. So that was our magic circle one, and he's growing. The other way, the second way that I know to do, start with our <laughs> first stitch again. And this time we just chain. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. I'll go with ten, just so that we've got an idea. Now I'm going to be working in rows, backwards and forwards. So I'll start with my first one. And it's one. And I do singles just to get myself a good base. So I'm going to come across just with a single crochet to get... A decent base row. There are a lot of uh, YouTube tutorials on how to do the different stitches. So I won't overdo that. I'm just giving you an idea 
hopefully, of how to get yourself going. Let's go on in that last one. He will go in there. Okay, so I've got my straight bit. Now I'm going to do one chain to come up and I'm going to go straight back into that one. That's my two. There's my one. So I'm doing it again. That's my two. That's my one. <laughs> it's like writing lines, isn't it, when you mean naughty at school? That's my two. So all the time you're doing this, your, your bottom bit's staying the same, but your top is starting to fan out. And it will eventually, I can't remember what I've done in that one. Two, one, right, two, next one. <laughs> Start waving for you. And if you wanted to do another side to it, if you, as I say, if you wanted to do an extra bit, you just go in, when you finish this half, turn him over and pick up and just work up these and then that will come out as well in a different colour, in the same colour. However you like it. I've lost count again. Never mind, I'll put two in this. <laughs> I can't talk and count at the same time. You've, told, you've seen that, you see? I'll do one. Up, one chain up. Go back into that stitch so I've got my two and away we go. We've got, you know, if I'm not sitting the right way around for you. <laughs> yep, it will go two in that one. Yeah, so I'm going in, round, through, over. Pull through. How many I do? I want two in the next one, don't I? So in, round, pull through, over, two. Two in this one. In, round, over, pull to through. Next one's a one. Next one's the two. It will eat your wool up. I mean, I can usually use... 100 gram on a decent sized coral. If I want it any bigger and the change in colours and all that, obviously I can use more wool. I decided because I have more wool, you probably can't see that. Let's just pull you up a bit. See, <laughs> the wool is up there. I'm pointing to it on the telly. The wool's up there, but because there is a fair bit, I can change whatever colour I like and just swap them and then add them and away we go again. See if we can get you back down to here. How are we? Right, what are we on? We've got one in there, so we want two in the next one. But as I say, if you miss a stitch or you've uncounted, it's not major. The world will not come to an end. We'll be fine. You just... Start off again with your counting and keep going. One, two. So I hope that this has answered my Carolyn's question on how to get going. But I'll probably, you know, say not everybody crochets like me because I do it like I'm a knitter. You can see that now. Hopefully, he's got his starter row and then he's starting to fan because obviously we're putting more stitches in. The more we put in, the more he's going to fan. We've got one more for you. Here's one more. Look at this one. This has just gone very long. It obviously had quite a few. Oh, lots starter stitches in there. You can do them 
as much as you like. Right, so there's the starts. So that's how long I did my chain work for. Then I was into the one twos. And he comes out like that. And he will lay however you want to lay him. They're fascinating. I like them. They're just so tactile and lovely to play with and cuddle. And, you know, if you haven't got a teddy bear, you can have a coral to cuddle. <laughs> yes, if you're strange like me, you'll definitely want a coral to cuddle. There you go. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Hope you have a go. Do give us a thumbs up. Do subscribe. Because I'll always show you something different. You know this. And I shall say, stay safe, take care. And it's bye-bye for now.